My name is Tamar. I'm a 26 year old, uh, which makes me a programmer uh, like from half of my life. It's a actually nice uh, landmark uh, piece uh, for me. Um, this is me uh, when I was like five. So uh, let's jump right into it and talk about logs, right? We love logs. It's easy, it's effective, it's common used in all kinds of languages. It's not like only for Python. Uh, you have really simple APIs across all languages. Uh, you have great visibility tools. You can filter out any logs that you don't want to see. So like in the worst case, okay, I just added another line. It's fine, I will ignore it later because I have all these great tools that I will just filter out everything uh, that I need. So uh, what uh, we log, uh, I will go over like uh, some, like the general cases. First, of, the first one is just understanding the flow, right? I call it the x-ray of your, uh, of your program. You just want to know which function called each function and you just want to understand what is going on. The second one is when you want to uh, understand what errors you are having and maybe sometimes debug your code using, uh, using uh, uh, logs. Let's see. Let's say that you are seeing some error in your uh, in your code, and you're trying to understand how to reproduce it. Sometimes it's really not easy to do it on your local machine or or, or like in your development environment because you don't uh, quite understand which flow, which uh, which flow and which flow and which user input uh, uh, make you uh, reach to uh, this situation. So the easiest way to do it, well, let's just print everything, let's put it on production, and let's just see what bring me uh, to this uh, point, and I will just have all the information that I have, I will be able to look at my information, and I will be able to uh, see what happened. And the third one is, let's say that I know that I'm, a develop I'm developing some component, and I know that there is a rare use case, right? I don't know how common it's going to be. And I know that I don't have like the time to handle it right now. I have a, a really a short deadline. I uh, uh, don't have enough time. It's really complex. So let's just put a log there. Maybe uh, I'll ignore it later. I just want to know how many times I really, I really will face it in reality, in production. Uh, this is pretty aligning with all the different log levels that we, that we that we have, uh, so this is it. So uh, we talked about uh, what uh, do we log, so let's talk about where could things go wrong. I'm going to go over uh, some examples. All the examples that you're going to see are from open source uh, project or I uh, just change them a little bit in order to have like a more uh, uh, a nice demo and, and remove all boilerplates from there. All the uh, data that you're going to see is not real. I mocked everything. You're not going to see here any real secrets, so uh, everything here is safe. Uh, and we're going to go over some uh, uh, code. So let's go over the, uh, the first example. So here we can see uh, some functions that is trying to uh, config a connection to uh, some source control. It can be uh, GitLab, GitHub, anything like that. Uh, you are uh, using a git config uh, command and you're replacing the URL. Uh, the thing that can happen here, that is when you're logging, when you're logging uh, which, which command you're running, you're actually exposing here uh, the actual uh, token for uh, the GitLab that you are using. Let's go to another request here. A common uh, thing to do is to just log every API request that you're doing and give every data away. So you're uh, logging your URL, your, your headers, your data. And of course, sometimes, uh, sometimes in, your, uh, in your header, you have the authorization and here again, we have some uh, token uh, that was exposed. Another case that I saw 
also pretty common that you're getting some uh, environments uh, from the user, uh, arguments from the user, and you uh, start up some, you, uh, uh, some, some application and you just want to log, hey, I just uh, start up uh, 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 this, uh, this uh, application, and you're logging everything, including uh, here your secrets. And the last, uh, the last example that we're going to see, uh, let's say that you're trying to connect to some uh, database and uh, you failed to connect to the database. And here again, you are seeing uh, all the uh, credentials exposed, all the uh, URI uh, uh, exposed. The failure can be, I don't know, maybe there was just a, ne a network problem. It doesn't mean that these credentials aren't valid. It means that maybe other things uh, might occur in the way. Great. So, okay, right. We we see we saw that there there is like a, a, a secrets that were exposed, but we do have a great secret scanners, right? Like, we all know that plain uh, secrets aren't great. We all know not to store like password and everything on our on our like a, a source file. So what what is wrong here? We have like Git leaks, for example, and just like to understand uh, which one of you already know Git leaks. Okay, so we will talk later on a little bit more about Git leaks, but Git leaks, like in general, it's an open source tool. It's a great tool, have a lot of uh, stars and forks um, that you can run on your uh, repo and it will, uh, and it will just uh, uh, detect any any secrets that you might have on your uh, on your code. The problem is that those uh, kind of uh, of scans cannot uh, identify and detect everything that is not uh, listed plain on your source file. So if you're getting all your secrets like from the right places, like from n variable, from so, so, some secret manager, everything your secret uh, detection just won't find them and won't uh, uh, notify you that, wait, you're exposing here something that you might really don't want to expose. All the, uh, all the uh, examples that I showed you, if you're not like really, really putting attention into what you did, and if the developer itself is not really understanding what this log is going to contain when he will run it, it's really, easy to miss, wait. I just put here something that I shouldn't uh, put. And you know what is going to make everything even worse? Who get access to your logs? Everybody, right? In a company, everybody get access. It's not like your, I don't know, your S3 bucket or your cloud or anything that you have like complicated permissions and you have like hierarchy, no. Everyone can just go into your logs, see everything, and get all uh, this information. So let's uh, understand what is the situation so far. Everyone has access, and we do have secrets in logs, right? This is what is happening. So I want, you, I want to introduce you a tool uh, that I build called uh, the Masker Logger. Uh, this tool will uh, hopefully prevent uh, all your sensitive data to leak and uh, make your logger safer. So uh, let's do some demo. Uh, just a second. Great. Great. Oh, we already saw the secret. Okay. So uh, let's, uh, I want to just start and using, you know, this is a basic code. As you can see here, I'm just setting a normal uh, log. Uh, nothing uh, really special. Uh, this function load.env is a function uh, that 
What? Yes, yes, sorry. Of course, sorry. If it will, will, will work. Ah. OK, thank you. No. Command B. Thank you. <laughs> OK, so uh, let's just go over this code. I'm setting here a, 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 like the normal logger. I'm using here like the uh, logging module. Um, setting everything as it needed. I uh, using stream handler. I want to see it on the uh, STD out. Uh, putting some uh, uh, formatter here. Uh, the load.env function is a function uh, that will load everything that I need from my env file. And in my env file, I will have two secrets. Let me just uh, show them to you. Wait a second. So here, uh, as you can see, uh, this I think is an AWS uh, secret. This one, I'm not sure, but there are uh, like real formatted tokens uh, that are real. And now let's just, uh, and I just printed uh, everything that we are seeing here, so let's just uh, do it. And now, as you can see, uh, even that here I didn't so like when I, I developed this uh, wonderful model, I didn't saw that I printing any secrets. Eventually, when I look in at the logs, yeah, I do see now plain secrets uh, in my logs. The only change that I'm going to do right now is changing my formatter to the nice masker formatter and just run this code again. And as you can see, now I have my uh, uh, secrets mask. Nice. So let's go back uh, to the uh, slides and understand how uh, this magic happens. Wait, wait. OK. So how it works? We have two steps. Uh, we have a step that is happening when you're creating the instance of the formatter, and then we have steps that, is, that are happening on each line that you are going to run. Uh, okay. We are going to dip uh, into, like, not all the steps, but uh, into some of those steps. Now it's like some general overview. So let's uh, start. This tool is based on the Git leaks. Uh, GitLix tools. This means that we are taking uh, their Git, the GitLix uh, 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 config file and we parse it. Then we are creating some uh, map, some dictionary that is matching some keywords to some regexes, and we are create some automaton with all the keywords that we found. And during uh, runtime, uh, like what we actually uh, we are doing. Uh, the formatters have some format function, we override it, we search for a match of the line that we got, and uh, we are masking it. So uh, let's dive into it. Um, so the git leaks uh, uh, toml is a format of uh, how the secrets uh, uh, detection are stored. It's, uh, uh, it looks like that for each a, a detection, like the detection aren't like general detections because you don't want to have a lot of false positive. If we just catch any like a, a, a stream of characters that looks like password, I don't know, maybe it's just a, a someone that they have a we weird name or something like that, I want to reduce as much as possible my false positive. So each detection have like a really specific regex to find exactly what I'm trying to look and not just have a, 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 like a random, random characters, and I will call it a, a password. So here is an example of how a, a detection looks like. So here we are trying to find some Atlas, Atlassian API token. And uh, as we can see, we have a really long regex. I even didn't show all of the regex. If you want to like understand better the regex, I really, uh, 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 there is a great site called Regex 101. You can put the regex there, you can play with it, you can understand like which part is detecting which part of the line. It's really nice tool. 
And for each regex, we have a keyword. Uh, the keyword is saying uh, when I even should start and try to match this regex. Because what is the problem? Let's say that uh, I have a line that I want to see if there is a secret in that. If I will go over all the regexes that I have in my Gitlix file, it will take me a lot of time, right? Because reg regex matching is not that fast. Uh, like the Gitlix have hundreds of those kind of, 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 uh, of rules of, of detections. So it will take a lot of time. So I want to create some uh, basic filter that will filter out anything that I want to even start to search and, uh, and uh, uh, try to do the, reg the regex matching but by uh, uh, searching for those keywords first. Um, okay, so how this uh, search for a match is actually uh, uh, working, so I will just uh, go uh, one slide back. So when I say create a, a keyword reg regex map, I'm saying yes, let's just, uh, for each keyword that we saw in that file, let's just uh, put as a value uh, the compiled regex. We are using it compiled already because we don't want to compile it every time. It will save us more runtime later and runtime is important to us. And uh, let's talk about uh, the search for image. So, we are using the Ahokoasic algorithm in order to do the keywords uh, uh, matching. Um, I will talk about this algorithm a little bit later. But let's say uh, the first uh, box here just saying yes, we are finding the right keywords really, really fast. And then we are getting a small list of regexes. And only on this small list of regexes, we're going to try and find a match for our string, and then if we're getting a match, uh, we're just doing a simple uh, masking. We are uh, looking into the ma match groups and replace it with asterisks, right? So let's talk about how we are doing uh, the first step of finding uh, those matches using uh, the Aokorasic algorithm. So the Aokorasic algorithm in general, um, is a really great uh, uh, algorithm for a multiple string match. How it's work? Uh, the algorithm needs as input all the possible uh, keywords that you want to try and match in the future. It's built pre uh, 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 runtime as an automaton um, that will hold all the uh, strings that you want to compare to. And once you want to start to compare, uh, you have only one deterministic way to understand if a string in, is inside this state machine or not. If you have like two prefixes that share the same, uh, uh, you have two keywords that like share the same prefix, they will have in the beginning the same path and only when the characters will divide, it will divide into other, uh, other uh, 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 path. But uh, for each keyword, you're going to have a deterministic path, and now for each word that you're going to try to match, you will have an answer if it's inside the machine or not. So let's just have some a, a simulation of, of a running of this algorithm. So I'm not sure that like the people uh, in the back can see, but uh, like uh, we are trying to, to match the line Python conference in Prague is paradise, and uh, the keywords are Prague, Python, uh, paradise, something like that. So um, this is how uh, the algorithm uh, is working. So if we are uh, wrapping it up, uh, to the steps of how it's working, we are reading the Gitlex, right? It's the first step. We are parsing it. We are taking all the keywords and match to all the regex. We are building a, a, a automatum with all the keywords that we find, okay? It's a really big a, a, a state machine that contain all the keywords. And now for each line, we are going through a, this a, a automaton and try to understand if we have or not 
a match. If we do have a match, we take the regex that is a, 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 like it, they are mapped together, the keywords are the keys, uh, so we have easy access to the regex and we just try and match uh, those regexes. Nice. So now let's talk about uh, what we care. Uh, the runtime analysis, so I do a multiple runs uh, over uh, this, this logger. Uh, so overall the difference uh, is like uh, one second. It's not affect, uh, like barely affect uh, the runtime at all. I think it's like uh, really uh, uh, great. Um, so yeah. Um, this is a project that I started actually uh, for uh, uh, this uh, conference because I saw a lot case, a lot of cases while I, I worked and, and I wanted to uh, uh, build a solution for that. Um, I really uh, uh, like want this project to, to keep grow and to uh, and have the community helping out to build. I think it's like a really uh, uh, and I think uh, like it's really in the beginning. I, I, I'm sure that there are a lot of nice things that uh, uh, can be done there. And I just encourage you all, if you want, uh, take a look, uh, use it yourself. Uh, I put there a, a nice documentation if you want. And just uh, keep your secrets away. Thank you. So I think we have like a, quite a lot of time for questions. So if you all have questions, please do line up near the microphones and uh, shoot away your questions. Hello, this was a nice talk, a cool idea. Um, do you know the struct log library for logging? And is uh, this library compatible with struct log? What? Um, struct log is another logging ah. library. OK, so yeah. uh, like the implementation, uh, we didn't want to implement the whole logger because we did, we did want like, the, uh, like each one to use each uh, uh, for logger that he wants. So uh, if the log library that you're talking about is uh, compatible with the, lo the logging uh, of formatter, like the regular uh, logging uh, formatter library, yes, it is compatible. Okay, it's, it's similar, but it uses a different kind of like filtering pipeline, but I think it can be made uh, compatible very easily. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe I can create an issue in your project. Thank you. So your focus seems to be on sort of access tokens and that kind of thing, but obviously there's a whole bunch of other things we don't want to log, you know, like personal information, say somebody's mm -hmm. name and medical diagnosis or something like that, which yes. is much more free form. Yes, so um, we have like in general secrets and we have like PII, like some personal data that we don't want to share. Uh, Gitlix have like some, uh, some kinds of detection all also for that, like I don't know, uh, credit card numbers or mails or things like that. And of course, Gitlix is an open source project, so if you want to add just another detection, it's uh, always possible. Um, it's like really, uh, you have space to add your own uh, detection. And like in general, I didn't show all the features of, of the tool, but you can also like put your own uh, a configuration if you don't want to rely on Git leaks. You have like multiple uh, options there, uh, but it was just a short demo. Thank you. Cool. Um, nice. <laughs> Uh, all right, so thank you so much for your talk. It was really, really amazing learning about security. If you all have any more questions, you can feel free uh, to catch it out down at the hall or on Discord, anywhere. I think you'll be available. So your questions can go there as well. Um, so yeah, thank you so much. Thank you.